У себя. Hello, I'm back. I hope you've all had a lovely day. I was on here earlier and was looking at the body cam of law enforcement on the day Magdalene Soto went missing. And to be honest, I feel sorry for whoever's paid the money for them, for that. Because it was a lot of money from what I know. And it didn't really show a lot. It didn't. One, there's one or two parts of it that we pick, we could take apart. And I'll be doing that on Sunday. So if you want to come and take apart the video of... Stefan Sterns and James Soto on the police cam, body cam. Please join me on Sunday evening. Because I picked up on one. And as I picked up on it, the guy who's... No, I hadn't watched that video. And I picked up on it. And then, literally, as after I picked up on it, he stopped the video. He stopped his recording because I was, he was watching his recording. And he picked up on it as well. Oh, wow, yeah, I wasn't just imagining it then. Because sometimes I think, did I just imagine that? Did I just see that? Does it mean anything? So. Anyway, today we're looking back again. Oh, well, let me pull up a bit too. This. Of this young girl, Whitney Hatfield. 16 years old, went missing. Um, well, she was last seen on March the 7th, 2024. Between 1.30 p.m. and 2.30 p.m. Um, in the two block, in the vicinity of 4600 block, of Main Street, South, South Salem, Ohio. She was living with her grandmother at the time. She'd only been there 
four weeks, one month she's been there. Originally from Montana, but she was adopted from there. And then they moved to Alabama. And then from Alabama, she went to Ohio to live with her grandmother after her grandfather died the year before. And um, she just went out one day and never come back. Although she did leave two notes. Two notes. One note first was found straight away saying that she was going to, with a friend to babysit and that she was going to get paid and the husband was a doctor and she would phone as soon as she could. Not to worry. Now, I'm sorry, but not giving me any names of who who you're going to, I'm going to worry. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, just go away. Come on, you don't mind. Carry on. You're going to do some babysitting. Yeah, okay. But then, about in the early hours of the morning, the uncle who lived with the grandmother as well found a note under his pillow, and it was from Whitney saying. Please tell Gran not to phone the police because it won't end well. Or something to those words. Now, it got me thinking, and I still haven't been able to find anything on him. Right? Because whenever I go into certain apps, it blocks me. Because I'm in the UK, I'm at the USA. And, um... So it blocks me. Oh, before we go any further, I'm going to read a comment that someone left me. Right? And it was on... What case was it on? Oh, where is it? Hmm, where's that message gone? Mm -hmm. I can't find it now. It was there today, I knew it was. Oh, here it is. Right, I'm going to see if I can share it with you. Because, you know what, these sort of comments is like water on a duck's back, back to me. And if you don't like what you see, then you know what you can do. Scroll on. Scroll on. Right? And she goes, or he goes, or whatever she. If you hear something like Sebastian Rogers is missing, and your first reaction is, Where's the baby? Katie, what di what do did you do with him? Katie, did you let Chris do stuff to him? Katie, what do you do what did you do with his body? Chris, why did you abuse him? Well, I, I've never said anything like that. I did put out, put up a comment that someone posted every week. And this was from a while ago, that video that she watched. Right? Demanding answers to cases that are frankly none of your damn business and nobody owes you anything. And then you go mob up in someone's yard, committing what's known as interstate stalking, which is a felony when you cross the state lines to stalk and harass people. Right? And so is wire fraud when you solicit funds on the internet rooted in lies, deception and misinformation. 
You are not part of some true crime community. You are a raving lunatic who will be look will be lucky if you don't get shot or arrested. Right? Now I was very polite in my reply. Right? I've just gone, well I'm from the UK, so I can't actually be feet on the ground, so I can't actually stalk. And I only work on the facts. And if you've ever watched any of my other videos, I've always stated that law enforcement don't have to tell us anything. Plus, my play page is not monetized. So I don't get any money. I'm not getting anything from what I put out. So please, just leave. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. Right? Now, if people want to come on my page and put comments like that, then fine. Right? Now... I didn't want to do anything until I showed you, right, but I can't, I don't know if I can block her, right, she's got two subscribers, good luck Miss Taylor, good luck, anyway, so, Oh, can I get back? Go home. Oh, yeah, that's it. So, to come on my page, my channel, and say all that crap, Miss Taylor, whatever, two weeks ago, but I've only just seen it. This was posted two weeks ago, and I've only just seen that comment. Now, I check my comments every day. Every day I check my comments. So why that one didn't come up sooner? I do not know. Don't know. Unless I didn't see it. I just didn't see it. I don't know. But... But for her, someone like that to come on my page and say something like that, and nobody owes you, I've always said law enforcement aren't in don't have to tell us anything. I've always said that. It's not, uh, not their job to tell us. It's not our job to say who's guilty and who's not guilty. It's not, not my job to do anything. All I do is put out the facts. Right? Put out the facts and leave it at that. Hi, SG. So, I don't know why I didn't see that comment before. But I've just replied today. don't know why I never saw it before. I really don't. And, um, and to accuse me of fraud. What was it she put on you? Uh, and then you... Franklin on your gamble and steak, which is a felony, which you cross line. So, so is wire fraud. I'm sorry, wire fraud. Ooh, she obviously hasn't watched any of my other YouTube channel videos, none of them. Because she would definitely hear me say, and several of them, my page is not monetized that means sweetheart if you ever listen to any of my videos again which i hope you don't right i don't get paid one penny okay now i don't know how long you've had your channel open for you've got two subscribers good luck that's all I'll say. Good luck. Anyway, I'm coming off now. So, hi, SG. I was just showing a comment someone... Well, and I really don't know how I missed that comment. I don't. And I get people come through say, I find your accent really hard to understand. I'm sorry, I can't do nothing about my accent. 
And if you're watching on replay, you can go into the description and you can go down and click on transcript and it'll bring up the transcript as the video plays along. So you're not just hearing me talk, you'll see what is being said as well. Right? Because I've had to do it sometimes on some channels. You know what I mean? They talk so quickly, I'm going, did I just, what did I, did I just miss something? And I have to rewind it two or three times or pull the transcript up. All right, okay. You know what I mean? So just, if you're watching on replay and there's any problem with the accent, because I am from the UK, I am from Birmingham, I have got a brummy accent, and I can't do nothing about that. So, please, just... If you don't like my videos, then click off. Click off and go, go and watch someone else. I really don't care, right? I've got my good follow. I've got my good people who are here every time. Well, mostly every time. They might be working or they might be busy elsewhere, but they're, they're here. So I'm not worried about that one or two comments that I get every so often. Anyway, as I said, today we're looking at when I can pull her picture up again. Whitney Hatfield. As I said, I wanted to find out some more information on the father. I haven't been able to find anything on her father. Her bio father, I should say. And, which is a bit annoying. Because, how do we know it wasn't her father that she was talking to. How do we know? He may not have said it was her father, but then again, perhaps he did say it was her father. And that's why she's told no one. But, there's also that possibility that I was talking about the other night, that I believe her friend from Alabama know something and I've not been able to find anything on that young girl either because as I said I go into certain things and it just blocks me because I'm from the UK <sighs> I could go and get one of them pay for one of them things where oh what's it called where I can log in and put myself, say, living somewhere in the USA, yeah? And I'll get the information, then I can type in. But I sometimes think, would it be worth my while at the moment? Possibly not at the moment. Once, if my channel gets bigger, then I will. Because there's a lot of information I'd love to be able to get my hands on, and I can't do it. So, but for a young girl to go missing and the police treat her as a, to just go, leaving a note, like she did, she didn't put no names in it, she just said she was going with a friend or something like that to do some babysitting and the father was a doctor. Uh -huh. No names, nothing. Now, that's going to set off ring bells, alarm bells in anyone's head. Okay, so who's this, who's this doctor? What's his name? Where does he live? What's his phone number? You know what I mean? So I think, like many people have said this, I think she was told to write that letter. Right, she wasn't picked up from the house because someone's seen her walking down the road. And she said she looked a bit stockier. So she must have had, like, a bag or something either on her front, under her coat or something, or on her back, under her coat. She was trying to conceal the bag, whatever it was. And uh, they managed to track her phone up to a cemetery. And, uh, I'm going to go on Google Maps, because I like Google Maps.
right? So we can just go over where the dogs went from, okay? And I'm going from where? Main Street, Safe Asylum. Um, Saps Harlem, Ohio. Right. Now she lived on um, the block of four six hundred block. Four six hundred. Main Street Save Salon There, right? Put that up. I prefer to have this up for some reason. It just gives me a better view. So let's have a look. I'm going to take this down. And we're going to pull this up. Right? Now, four, six hundred mile street. There. Right, that's where she lived. So, let's see if we can... No, not four, six hundred. Thank you. Let's go in. Is it not going to let my little man go in? Nope, doesn't look like Google Maps has been round the road, so let's see if we can get on here. Nope, it's not letting me take my little man in. Okay. Well, she lived here. This is her house, I should imagine. This is her house. And they tracked her going, where's the cemetery? Right, right, let's see if we can find the cemetery. I know she went up towards the school. Well, sorry. They tracked her and she, the dogs went... I don't know if she went up the road or what. But she went along here, up here, up to the school. There's an old house there. She sat on the porch because apparently you can get the internet from there. And her phone, like my phone, I pay each month to have so much Full internet on my phone. She didn't have that set up on her phone. Right, so she could get internet, but when she was outside, she'd have to go to certain places and what I call piggyback off someone else's internet. Right, she sat there for a while. Then she's got up and she's walked up here. Right, now from here... The aunt said, you can see, from round town, you can see all the cars coming both ways. You've got a clear view round here of all the cars, because it must go up a hill. I can't tell, because it won't let my little man down there. Right, I'm trying. <laughs> it won't let my little man down. Let's see if I get close if you'll let my little man go down. No. No, it's not letting me go down anywhere. <coughs> <coughs> right, so she they tracked her up to there to here. Because that's the school. She wasn't in school at the time because she was doing a um a GED or something like that, like they're doing in the USA. And 
there's waiting to get her started on that. So she was sitting somewhere around here. And she could see all the cars coming and going. Then she gets up and walks along. Up to here. Around the corner. And then that's when the dogs lost the scent. When she got up around here. So obviously she's seeing the car. Come either this way. Must she come this way for her to see him. She come this way. Going up there. And waited. She's seeing him come walking down and walked up to the car. That's my. That's what I think. Right. Yeah, friend definitely knows something. If I was Laurie, the second note would have put a doubt in my min mind that she went to Babsy. Well, I'm sorry, the first note would have put a doubt in my mind. No name, no phone number, no address. Come on. You know what I mean? If you're going to go and babysit, you at least give a name, don't you? Right? I'm going to such and such to babysit. Right? And if you know your parents don't know that person, you say, I'm going to this address where I'll be babysitting. I'll be back tomorrow. But there was nothing. No name, no address, no phone number, nothing. So I had to be... If I was going, what? No name, no phone number, nothing. That's not right. So, and because she's classed as a missing person, she's not getting the attention that she needs. Which I think is disgusting. They might say, okay, she's 16 years old, she, she knows what she's doing. I'm sorry. I was 16. In fact, did I know what I was doing? No, I didn't. I didn't. I, I didn't know what I was doing. All I knew was that I was getting up, going home, getting up, going to bed, getting up, having so much to eat. And maybe if I was lucky, which I was, going to work. Right? And coming home, having something to eat, maybe go out in the night time if we had plans to go out with my friends anyway. Otherwise, just stay in, watch some boring TV, then go to bed about 10 o'clock because I was absolutely shattered. I only went out really on the weekends when I was working because I was shattered because I was getting up. My first job, I was a walking distance from my house. Really was, so I didn't have to worry about transport and nothing. But I had to be there for eight in the morning, seven thirty, eight a.m. in the morning. Right? Yeah, she was known to go and see old men. Didn't one actually come forward and say he'd been speaking to her? He actually came forward, he's seen the missing poster, and he actually came forward and said he'd been speaking to her. But he hadn't met her. But what bothers me is the friend. She could be scared. Perhaps she's thinking, well, she's gone missing. I can't afford to say anything. I could be just like her. Right? I did think perhaps her friend had got her into this, but I don't think she had. She got into this herself by meeting this guy. And I think she met him several times while in Alabama. Right? Because she was sneaking, I heard, I can't remember where it was I heard it, that she'd been sneaking out on the night times when they've all gone to bed and coming back before morning. So she wasn't gone long. Right? So she was meeting up with this person then. So why did she... And then she moves to Alabama. And I think 
this was the guy's, in, like, she's probably, probably spoke to this guy about, oh, she's got a granny who lives in Alabama. Oh, that's near and me. If you go there, if you can get to move to your grandma's, then I'll be able to see you more. It'd be easier for me to come and see you. No, no, I, I understand where you're coming from. Right, that's the fact that she was known to see older men. But to not leave a phone number, or a name, or an address, come on. Right, she was told to write that note. Otherwise, if she did that note herself, she could put an address or a phone number. I'm sure she was if she wasn't that silly. Right, but we need, this girl needs to be found. So if you're watching this on replay, please share this. I've got two other, I believe there's two other videos on my channel, on my YouTube channel, about this young girl. Go and watch them. Share them. Share the hell out of them. This girl needs the attention because she's classed as a missing person by law enforcement. They are not doing nothing. They're not doing nothing. And... It shouldn't be like that. That note was enough. The second note was enough to say, this is not a missing child case. And it could be part of a trafficking ring. You know what I mean? Perhaps while she was in Alabama, she, they were just testing her out on the waters, you know what I mean? And then once they got up to Alabama, uh. Ohio. Where could you go from my... I'm going. I'm going to go to the Google Maps, right? Zoom out. We're going to zoom out. Right? Now, look, it isn't very big. The town is sound. South Salem. It's... Well, you could walk around. You, you could do, a, like, a... You exercise around that little village every day. Just walk around it. Right? Where are the main roads, right? Uh, let's have a look. There, right? Those are the main roads. Now, if she met someone... Right? Straight, you know what I mean? It wouldn't take long to get up to, across to here. Or from that angle to there. Right? And where did I go? Where does it go from here? Right? Um. Chill cop. Oh, yes, I wanted to. I'm going to write that down because... I never did get round to reading about that, Shilka, right? And I'm going to have a look at that now on here, online. Because uh, apparently it's um, not a good place, right? Let's see what we get. It looks nice enough. You know what I mean? Chilli Coffee, historic town, Ohio River, River Mound Building, Mound Builders. It looks nice enough. Right now, let's go on to YouTube and see what they've got on there, okay? Because someone said that there's information about that place and it's not a good thing. All right.
Tien Kraft auf. Ah, oh, let's go. Experience chill, uh, share this tab. Experience chill craft of higher like never before. Best things to do in chill craft, chill craft of higher. The worst places in Ohio you should never move to. All to care being a nuisance in chill craft. Mm. Mmm, the Chili Craft 6 and Neil Falls. I'm going to have to watch that, you know what I mean? A public park of uh, uh, adjacent to historic first capital. Okay. Like to go in This was six years ago. No, I'm going to put a trigger warning on this, okay? Because there might be some on here that could be triggering, okay? So. Um, I'm going to put it there like that at the moment, okay? This could be triggering for some people. So, as I say, always say on anything like this, if it's too much, just walk away. And this is... Oh my god, um, what am I doing? This is a uh, R. R.O. sneaks around the park to make the girl arrested. Right? an attempt to understand their perspective on why they partake in these conversations online with people that are not of age. The goal of the interviews in these videos and the videos themselves is to gain an understanding of the perspective of the individual being interviewed so parents and the rest of society to be educated and aware of potential thought processes and desires of adults online to unsupervised persons not of age. These videos are not to cyberbully, harass, degrade, accuse, or threaten any individuals partaking in the interview process or in the video itself. We do not condone any of these actions. These videos are strictly educational and we grant full permission for academia, which is any classroom setting or in scholarly papers, to show or cite our videos. To ensure that these videos are strictly used for educational purposes, we strictly adhere to YouTube's community guidelines, such as not revealing someone personally identifiable information in other words PII YouTube defines personally identifiable information as their home address email addresses signing credentials phone numbers passport number medical records or bank account information we thoroughly look at and edit our videos to ensure that none of this information about any individual is shown in our videos to ensure extra privacy for each person that is a subject of an interview in any of our videos as of September 1st 2022 to thoroughly comply with YouTube's harassment and bullying policy there will be no mention or information about the last name or first name of any person interviewed in our videos due to potentially illegal activities discussed in our videos law enforcement in the respective jurisdiction we conduct these interviews in is notified of each interview and video filmed by us we are not accusing any individual interviewed of being guilty or committing a crime that is the job of law enforcement we are not vigilant and we do not condone vigilantism or vigilante behavior, such as taking the law into your own hand or not notifying law enforcement when suspected crime takes place. We are investigative journalists. Trigger warning. Some of what can be discussed in these videos can be sensitive to some, emotional or stressful. The only goal of these videos is to educate the public. At the end of each video, as of September 1st, 2022, there will be an educational portion at the end to discuss what was talked about in the video and to discuss what people can take from that video and learn from and tell others about. Our goal here is to bring awareness and educate the public. Now the video will start. Thank you. Just not working, dude. Like Streamyard is just not working right now. What about Prism, dude. I think Prism logged me out or something. You're sending it up, Pablo. Oh my god. Oh 
Oh my. <laughs> He's out. So gross, dude. All right, here, Paula. It's on the charger right now. Did you get my text? Girl, set her up. Set her up. Go walk around and talk. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, oh man. No wonder he's not at the park park. He's probably not supposed to be there, but I don't think he's supposed True. to be a certain feet away. No, oh, yeah, probably. All right, ready? Here, Jack. Hey, what's up, Nate? Huh? Gotta talk to you about Emily. Huh? Gotta talk to you about Emily. Emily? My name is Gordon. Sorry to meet you like this. We're filming for safety. Um, we should probably move away from this, shouldn't we? Okay. okay. Uh, we're let's kind of go away from the street. So, um, sorry to meet you like this. What's going on? Okay. I don't want to. Um, uh, do you like work at all, or okay? What do you do for work? I'm working at. You work in air? Huh? What do you do for work? Okay. Jokingly, but no, I wouldn't do that. But this, this was today, though. I said I wouldn't do it. Okay. I wouldn't do it. Okay. So what I kind of am worried about, um, you know, for, for your sake, obviously, you know, the messages are the messages, whatever. It, it's more of kind of like, you know, what's on Telegram, all that type of stuff. Because are you like are you single right now or okay you're single all right you have you have a job you got a lot going for you right now and I'm kind of worried about what's on Telegram huh right now we have these people in the UK right and they in the UK in England they are allowed to do what they call a citizen's arrest which means they can hold them phone the police. And they can hold them wherever they find them, right? Wherever they are. You've mentioned her name in a couple of chats. I've looked up sex trafficking on her. It is a hub. I had a bust last year about 160 people busted. Right, which I could believe because as I said, what they are doing here is somewhat similar to what certain groups, and I used to watch them all the time, and um, I'd watch them on YouTube, and they could do what they we call a citizen's arrest. Can't do that in Scotland. If they walk away, you can follow them, but you can't detain them, you can't stop them. You know what I mean? You can't. But in the UK, if they try to run, you can then detain them. You can ping them down on the floor if you have to. You know what I mean? I've seen them. They've literally gave chase and pinged them to the floor. They've had some groups only have 
um, security with them who have got the license, right? Who are licensed security, and they even some of these licensed security are allowed to use handcuffs, so they carry these handcuffs on them. So, and I've seen them ping them down on the floor, sit on them, everything to stop them from running. They've called the police, and I've also sat there for like two hours, three hours, until the police turn up. It's ridiculous sometimes. Absolutely ridiculous. But then there are some groups, Ron, that will find out where an RSO lives, and they get a load of other people to go outside that property to the point where the police are informed, the police come, the police have to move that person out of that property. Right? Now, that's mob mentality. I don't like that. The way these other groups work, they will go onto sites and they do, they ask people in their, on their apps, have you got, would you be willing to let us use, if you've got any young pictures of yourself when you were younger, like 10 upwards to about 15, 16, would you be willing for us to use, for you to send us some pictures so we could use them as a profile pic? And people do. They do. And um, I remember I was watching one. And the guy they arrested, oh my God, was part of their team, right? Part of their team. This woman was felt so sick. She went to and said, I've had you in my house. I've had you around my children. And now we're having to detain you and wait for the police to come because of your Activity online. But the only problem with us is in the UK. Well, they just get a slap on the hand. And the next day, they don't even have bond over here. They don't do a bail or bond. They don't. Right. And, uh, which I think they should. Because that way I think a lot more people would struggle getting out would be locked up overnight until they, or whatever, until they went to court. You know what I mean? They wouldn't be out in the street because they wouldn't have the money to pay the bond. Oh, God, my cat's moaning. You just woke up, haven't you? Come on. Come on, then. Up here. Come on. And, um, they... They don't have that. So they take, they arrest them and they release them on their own reconnaissance or they keep them in jail overnight until they can, uh, in the prison cells at the police station overnight, until they can get them to court for remand, right? But there's one, and I'm not joking, he's lucky to be alive, this one guy, because... I don't know how many times I've watched these teams go out and collar this lad. And I've literally walked him to the police station. Right? Because the police station was only road, so they thought, well, rather than wait for the police, we'll walk them. Yeah, she wasn't loaded there. She was told to come by a predator. She felt she had no choice. Yeah. I think that as well. Because why would she write in that second letter? It won't end well. So I'm hoping that letter, that second letter, doesn't come true. I'm hoping and praying that second letter doesn't come true. Where it won't end well. Right, let's have a look. Look up, what was he? 
look up sex, sex, sex trafficking in America. Okay. Is that on y YouTube? Right. Um, let's have a look. Um, I'll go on YouTube. Six. Oh my lord! Are you kidding me? Ohio AG, more than 150 people face charges after Ohio human trafficking. That was eight months ago. You know what I mean? Organisation Ohio Top 5 for Human Trafficking Cases. Truths about sex. Oh my lord. Right, Ohio Human tra Task Force. Well, signs of trafficking to look out for. Right, we're going to watch this because it's only a minute long, this one. And it's about the signs of what to look out for. Just yesterday, police raided a massage parlor in Pickerington for a human trafficking investigation. Today, we wanted to know just how common this issue is in Central Ohio. And exactly how do you identify it? TNTV's Terry Jabor spoke to the Ohio Human Trafficking Task Force to find out. Human trafficking is happening all over Ohio, and it happens in many different forms. Maria Bush with the Ohio Human Trafficking Task Force says trafficking is an issue here in Central Ohio. She says it happens to those who are most vulnerable. Maybe people who are experiencing homelessness or housing instability, uh, people who may be undocumented. According to the National Human Trafficking Hotline in 2000. In 2021, there were 291 cases of trafficking identified with 424 survivors. Majority were female in sex trafficking cases. But Bush says trafficking exists in many other forms. Um, it can also look like labor trafficking, where oftentimes foreign nationals who were recruited from their home country are then forced to work a job that's different from the one they were told, and then their wages are with... Yeah, we have that over in the UK. We have that um, trafficking where they bring them over and they give them to families and they're treated like crap. They're scrubbing floors and they're given pitiful food and things like that. Withheld from them. It can also look like commercial sex involving individuals with substance use disorders where a trafficker is withholding drugs from victims to get them to engage in commercial sex, bring money back to the trafficker. Bush says it doesn't matter if it's a rural, urban, or suburban area. Trafficking happens everywhere. She says these are some signs it could be happening. Having their wages withheld from them or having their documentation withheld, or maybe victims are actually living in their place of work. When it comes to survivors, Bush says they need support, and that support is different for everyone. So oftentimes victims are in need of basic services, whether that's shelter or even tangible needs like food and other forms of tangible assistance like bus passes. If you suspect trafficking, call the National Human Trafficking Hotline at 888-373-7888. Reporting in Columbus, Wow. Never thought that of Ohio. But this is the latest one, the Ohio AG. More than 150 people facing charges after Ohio human trafficking tracked down. 149 people arrested for trying to buy sex. Suspects range in age of 17 to... A sick, but it was me because I think this is the case with Whitney, and I think law enforcement need to get onto this. I did email. Nancy Grace, asking her, I, I said, I know you're very busy, 
told you about the case, I sent her the flyer, right, and I said, but this case isn't getting the, the what needs, it isn't being spoken about, it isn't on TV. I said, because they're classing it as a missing child. I said, but well, if you look, listen to what the mother says and the grandmother says, this is not a missing child case. So I left it at that sort of thing and went on my way. But I don't know what's going to happen. We, she might do a video, I don't know. But she won't do a video until she she gets all the information she needs first. I never push. Okay, I'll go on Google. Mom. Ohio sex. King. Just how much if you can spell properly and put spaces in. Right, you wrong about this one. This was done when uh not give me a second date. But look at this, um, right? Columbus, Ohio, a firefighter, college professor, and a Cleveland area city councilman were among 161 people arrested in a sexting operation last week, described as the state's largest focus on human trafficking. I know Polk County did a big uh, not Polk County, um, or was it Polk County? I can't remember. I know they've done big things, and TBI or whatever announced the other week they did a big sting in Tennessee, in Tennessee way. Let's just say. Right. Due to the large sex trafficking issue in her home, Nancy Grace may do it. She may do. I hope she does because this girl needs the attention. I'm also reading that Ohio, that Ohio, Ohio, Ohio is ranked 10, 10 state in human trafficking. Yeah, yeah. I hope this, I've got, this is just not right. This case, this young girl. Let me get her picture up again. This beautiful young girl. She didn't leave that house willing, well, she left on her own free will, but wasn't willingly. She went because she had that threat. We've had those cases in the UK. The girls would just get up and leave the home. 
And I'm obviously going, no, no, don't go, go. And they have to go because they know if they don't go, their parents could be killed. Whatever, the house could go up in flames. You know what I mean? And it's wrong. But this girl wasn't, didn't go on her own free will. She was, she was coerced. But you see, she got manipulated so much because I, that's why I still say I think she knew this guy when she was in Alabama. I also think she told her friend. Because everyone, when they're growing up, they've got that one friend they talk to. And they tell them everything. Everything. I had one. I had other friends, but I had one friend who I knew I could tell something to. And she wouldn't repeat it to anyone. Still, to this day, I could probably phone her up and tell her something. And she wouldn't tell no one. You know what I mean? And we're both in our 50s now, so... But she'd still be like that. She wouldn't tell a thing. So, she's 16. She, I can't even remember when I was 16, what I was like. You know what I mean? Life was too easy for me. Okay, I was getting up and going to work, but I was still coming home to my mum and my dad and having my meals cooked for me, my washing done for me. Right, the only thing I ever done was make my bed and put my washing away. And on the occasion, do some ironing for my mum instead of her standing there on a Sunday morning. I would do it. You know what I mean? Or I'd get the vacuum out and hoover the whole house and it was a big flipping, a biggish house. Three bedrooms upstairs and those biggest rooms and then you've got the stairs to clean and the hallway and the living room which was a through living room and then you've got the dog so you had to use a certain like velcro end on the vacuum to get the dog hairs up. Oh it's horrendous, I hate vacuum. But I did it. But that was the list of my worries. It was when I got married. Oh, my God, that was when it changed. I thought, oh, my God. I've got to do all this now myself. I've got to wash, cook, clean, go to work. You know what I mean? got even worse when I had kids. Because that was, oh, my Lord. How did my mum cope with seven? How did my mum cope? So at 16, you haven't got those worries. Right? And... She met this guy way before because, as I said, she was only at the grandmother's a month. A month. Takes them a couple of months. Takes them a few months to get them where they want them. To get them hook, line and sinker. You know what I mean? They throw that hook out. That fishy catches that hook. And they reel them in. Really slow because I don't want to lose that fish, so they're reeling them in very slowly to the point where, oop, you're not going nowhere. We've got you now, you're our dinner. And that's what it's like when traffickers go for children. They reel them in very slowly, get them, okay, just giving her the attention that she's always wanted. You know what I mean? She had a mother and father. I don't know where her, 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 her adoptive father is now. But she had a mother and father when she grew up, when she was growing up. But that still takes me back to her. If it isn't trafficking, right, could she be seeing her dad? And could she have told her friend that? that she's been seeing her dad. Right? Because apparently I heard that when police went to speak to the bio mother, she wasn't at the address they was given. She'd moved on. When she moved on, we don't know. We don't know when she moved on, but she'd moved on. So...
but it's just I don't understand. She had why? Why she didn't have to leave that house that day? Young girls and boys need to know. Look, speak out. Speak out. Don't worry about the threats. Because once you speak out, law enforcement will step in. And if they don't, then they are one hell of a bag with law enforcement. Law enforcement will step in. Right? And they will protect you. If need be, they'll put you in protective custody if they can. Put you somewhere where they don't know where you are. But you need these young girls and boys, not just saying girls, boys as well, need to speak out. They don't want to be scared of these people because they are nothing. Trying to be scared of them is when you walked out that house and met up with them again. That's when you need to be scared. Not while you're in the house. Not while your grandmother was in that bedroom sleeping. You could you wet you went into your uncle's, she went into her uncle's room to put the note under the pillow. Why didn't she go in and say to the grand, grand, someone's wrong, I, I need to talk to you, we need to see what I can do about this. You know what I mean? Because you really think he's going to come and knock the dog down and pull her out of the house? Don't think so. Not once you've spoken to someone, they're not going to let that. He's not going to come knocking on the door. Send her out here now if she owes me big I don't give a feck if she owes you billions. She's not coming out. So go feck yourself. Threaten me all you want. She's not coming out. All right? So she, they've got to understand that they can... Children today, you can speak out. Don't be scared to speak out. While you're still going home every night after seeing this guy or this person you're seeing, you go home every night, you know that, you're safe. But once you don't come home, once you get in that car and you know you're not coming home, that's when to worry. That's when you're not safe. Right? Speak out before it gets to the point of no return. Right? It's good the family's open to answering any questions. Yeah. I haven't been on the page for a couple of days. Well, yesterday, it was a, a bad day for me. Because the night before, I literally had about, what, two hours sleep, if that? So yesterday, I was just literally wiped out. And that's why I cancelled my live last night. Because I was just wiped out. I was just lying on the sofa. Even my cats knew I wasn't well. Because they just come and lie on the sofa with me. Normally, they do this mad act of running around the house like it's on fire. And crying constantly. You know what I mean? But they didn't, they just lay with me on the sofa, so they knew I wasn't feeling up. So cats do pick up on things. And they just lay with me on the sofa. I had something to eat, and then I'd go have another hour or so on the sofa. And then I went to bed about 10.30 last night, so... I got, I got some sleep, you know what I mean? So I woke up feeling a bit more refreshed. Not brilliant, but more refreshed than what I was. Tomorrow I've got a busy day, so I doubt if I'll be on a talk tomorrow because I don't know. No, I won't be on tomorrow because I've got to go over to my daughter in laws my son's place, because my grandson's going to Beavers and they're doing his, he's doing his first badge where they're meeting at the park and they've got proper instructors there to teach him how to ride the bike. So he's getting his, going for his first beaver badge, you know what I mean? So that's a couple of hours there. So I'm sitting with the granddaughter at the home, at her house. So I can get a bath to get her into her pyjamas and get her to bed. 
and then so I went behind to the back half eight to looking at half nine, quarter to tennis. And then Friday I've got my grandson. Saturday I've got my grandson. I've got my granddaughter this weekend. I don't know if I've got my granddaughter this week. No, I had my granddaughter last weekend. They no, every weekend. So I've just got my grandson this weekend. And um so I won't be online. But you know what? I will be busy because while he's in his bedroom or doing what he wants to do with his tablet or on TV, I'm sitting here writing up transcripts. Because when you go on to the transcripts, it doesn't tell you who's talking. It doesn't give you the names of who's talking. Well, as I'm typing it out, I'm putting the names down of every... as they come into the chat, as they're talking. You know what I mean? So... Like on the Duchess show, on the Duchess one, I've got Duchess, and then it'll go what she says, then go Chris, what he says, and then Duchess again, or Katie, or whoever. So I'm writing down, and it's taken me forever to do. But so I'll be doing that over the weekend, if anything. <laughs> and I hope I can download it where I don't need the internet to watch it. Because then I can do some when I go down while I'm travelling down to my daughter's on the coach. Get my laptop out. Just type away. Put my earphones in. <laughs> so, I won't be on tomorrow. I know that for a fact. But as I said, on Sunday... If you want, I am going over to, over the videos again of the cam, body cams of law enforcement. I'm going to break them cam videos down. There's only two real, two or three real good clips. There's one clip of the dog trainer, the dog, the trainer and the dog, police officer and the dog. Right. Um... And the clip that shows them going to the house, right? Just to get some information on what she was wearing again, just to get confirmation on that. They knock the door, they open the door, and that's it. You don't see nothing else for 45 minutes. 45 minutes is on that clip. But you don't see nothing, you don't hear nothing. It's been redacted. So... Someone, some people are paid a lot of money for these videos, these cams, video cams, and I think it's disgusting for what they've been given. I really do. The biggest one was where they went to the home, and it's been redacted. From the moment that door opened, it went black. And you see, when you put in for anything like that, they don't tell you what you're going to get. They don't. So they could have sent you six clips, all redacted. There's one clip which was redacted, but it was just redacted over the... Um, because they're looking at the monitor at the church. So there's that one. But you can't really hear what they're saying very good. So what I would say about that is put earphones in, you might hear it better. Anyway, that's Sunday night. Let's get back to... Whitney, this young girl, what's your views? What do you think? Right? Crime, uh, on Twitter, let me know what you think about this case. Do you think it's possibly her father is involved? Because we don't, I'm trying to find, I don't know his last name, so it's very hard. To find out what her father, about her by her father, because I can't find his last name anywhere. I might try put a post up on that page saying, does anyone know anything about her by her father? What his last name is? Or anything like that. I might put a post up on there today, see what comes back. 
because I don't like to ask questions like that, you know what I mean? Because it might be, it be a bit intrusive. But when you're trying to find a child, you need to know all, all the characters, all the people involved in this young girl's life. Now, like I say, he's got nothing to do with it. He's had nothing to do with it all since birth, you know what I mean? But how do we know he's had nothing to do with it? How do we know that he's not being in touch with them? She's on, she was on Facebook, she was on Snapchat. You know what I mean? How do we know she didn't go looking for her by her father? That's another question. How do we know that she didn't go looking for him? And by having that second note, don't come looking for, don't get the police involved because it won't end good. Could mean she's with her father and if the police get involved, he'll end up in prison. And she don't want that. So this, we need to know about the bio father. I don't know her friend's last name. Only know her first name. So that's hard again, unless you know her last name. So I might ask, they ask as well, I'm going to say, and can anyone tell me her friend's, her friend's name from Alabama? I believe it was Vivian or something like that. I can't remember. In my opinion, if she is, if she's defiant, she'd probably just say, I'm going to my dad's. But she wasn't defiant, right? She was a good good girl she used to help. She'd be there for a grand, helping a grand and all this lot. And she had plans for the future. She wasn't as if she was a, a troubled child. Yet uh, one main problem was she would talk to older men. Why is that? Perhaps she didn't have a father figure in her life. I don't know what happened to the adoptive mother and adoptive father. I don't know if they split up because we've not heard anything about the adoptive father. Don't know if he passed. We don't know. So perhaps she's looking for that father figure in her life. Because some young girls, if they grow up without a father figure in their life, that is what they look for. They go for people who are older. You know what I mean? So she, we really need to know who her father was, first and last name, where he was last living. Yeah, she went, yeah, she went off social media, didn't she? She, she, she deleted all her friends, everything. And why would you do that? Why would you delete all your friends and everything on social media? And why would you leave your purse behind? Right? Never do that. I've left my phone at home. Never have I left my purse. I've Well, unless I can't find my purse. Right? But I've always had money on me. So she's come off all her social media. She deleted her friends, everything. So what does that tell us? Is she in hiding? Did she, does she not want to be found? Or was she told to close her face, all her social media down? Mm, I, I've not... I'm worried that it's something to do with sex trafficking. I wouldn't say to I, I can see where you're coming from, SJ. I can see where you're coming from. But I'd like to know about more of her background, about her uh, adoptive parents. Are they still together? Is he still alive? You know what I mean? Because... If they divorced or he died when she was very young, she could she's growing up without a father figure. Yeah? 
She's looking for a father figure now. Now she's at that age where she can get on social media. She's looking for older men as a father figure. As her mother said, that was the one problem they had with her. She talked to older men. And her mum was always saying, you don't know who that person is. Because it's just a name. Just a name. You don't know who they are. So, I'm very surprised that one guy come forward and said, look, he'd been talking to her. But I uh, should imagine I've checked him out. You know what I mean? Like, when was the last time he spoke to her? Where was he on the day she went missing in between these times? And things like that. So they just checked him out straight away. But, you know, a young girl looking at older men. Like, I was 18 when I met my husband. Was it 18? Mm, probably 19. 18, 19 when I met my husband. He was 11 years older than me. I like, I prefer the older guys. Right, when I was younger. Right. I just did not get, get on with boys my own age. Right. At the time, the, guy, the lads I knew were like, well, four or five years older than me, five, six years older, you know what I mean? Not 10, 20 years older, but there's always older. You, you think it's sex trafficking? I'd like to look at the facts um, of all these, any young girls that have gone in, been put into sex trafficking if they closed their social media down before. What are the figures on that? You know what I mean? Uh, all these young girls I've found, did they have a social media account before? And if so, when did they close it down? When they went missing? When they went off grid, sort of thing? No one today, young girls today, do not go off social media. That is their lifeline. Right? She didn't have friends where she was at her grandmother's. She didn't know anyone. She wasn't at school, so she knew no one her own age. You know what I mean? She wasn't at school in Alabama because she was working towards her GED, whatever you call it in the US. So, so she wasn't meeting people her own age. I got um, if I could, but you know what? I'll probably click on something, and one day I could type just. Type the correct words in, like the keywords in, and I'll get in. I'll get in on certain apps or whatever, and I can get the information. But a lot of the time it's restricted, restricted, restricted. And I'm thinking, oh, my Lord. Someone put a post up the other day on one of the Facebook pages. If, you, if the police was to check your phone, your pictures, would you be in trouble? And I went, I'm safe with my pictures, but feck if they check my um, Google search, I'd be locked up. They'd pin every fucking murder on me. You know what I mean? If they went on my laptop, they'd pin every fucking murder that had happened in this, in, in this town on me because of what I'm looking up. Every job that had gone missing, I'd be pinned down for because of what I'm looking up for. Right? So, but I'd like to know the facts on these young girls. Like, when they went missing and they were sex trafficked, they've gone, they've been enticed out by someone, right? And they've gone off to meet them and then that's it, they've gone, right? Did they have a 
Facebook page or a lot of youngsters don't use Twitter. I think Twitter's more for the older person, I think. Did they have a Facebook page, a Snapchat thing? The new the social media shutdown may be fairly new for sex trafficking victims because the sex traffickers are getting busted. Sex traffickers are getting smarter, going further underground. Yeah, yeah. Right. I'll tell you something. You didn't hear sex traffic. I can assure you sex trafficking was going on way before social media even hit the, even come out, even before that. But it was underground, right? Deep underground. And they would get talking to them at a park. You know what I mean? How many times... I grew up in an era where we went to the park and there's always men around the park. Always men. Right? We had toilets in, in our park, public toilets. And it's always kept clean. I'll tell you that much. It's always, always kept clean. But I would never go in there on my own. Right? I was always say to a friend, come in, come in, because it's like a hedge. You had doors on the cubicles, right? But there's also a hedge around. So you go in and you walk up these little paths and it's all he like hedged in. So you couldn't see out. But you couldn't see in either as the, if anyone was hanging around by the toilets. So I'd always get someone to come with us. The toilet was spotless. Honest to God. But so were the parks and the parks were kept up to date. Always, always kept clean. There's no rubbish anywhere. The bins were empty. Right? Our parks were great when I grew up. A danger. Because we didn't have all that soft padding and wood chip and all that lot. Oh no, we didn't have none of that. We had tarmac. Or concrete. Anyway. So, um... That's how these people used to meet the young girls then. Was by the parks. And I remember once we used to have these guys, the park, we used to call it, they was called the park patrol. They used to come round. Once the park, parky, like, you had these guys in their hooks, in their offices, little offices. And they was there from, I think, nine in the morning, or eight. Nine till about five, nine till five, and I was there all day. Yeah, so I was really there all day. This guy would be there, and he was a great laugh, he really was. And when he went home, then he'd lock up the office and he'd go home. But then on the evening, we'd be sitting in the park by this pavilion, which was the changing room for the cricketers and the football players, right? They had changing rooms. You couldn't get in there. It's all locked up. But they had, like, this pavilion which you could sit, on, sit in or under. And the park patrol drive people would come round in the cars. And one day, I'm sitting on the boot. I am actually sitting on the front of their car. I'm just lounging on the front of the car. Like you do when you're 14, 13 and 14, right? And you know what this one guy said to me? You'd make a great model if you didn't have to open your mouth because I had a potty mouth. I still got a potty mouth. I still got a potty mouth. Right? And I looked at him, I went, and I looked at my friend and said, come on, we're out of here. And I walked away. And every time the park patrol people come on the night time, if he was in the car, I'd walk away. I just didn't get the right vibe off him. After what he said to me then, I thought, no, nope, I'm not having that. See, and I was only 13, 14, and I was wise enough to say that. So at 16, I was pretty wise. But then again, I didn't have to worry. I had three brothers. Three brothers who everyone knew about. Even though they wasn't troublemakers, they knew not to mess with me or my sister. You know what I mean? No, no, no. Do you know who her brother is? No. 
Oh, you don't want to mess, you don't want to mess with that one. Mess with her, you'll have her brothers on you. And that was why, how we grew up, how I grew up and my sister grew up. So we didn't have to worry about anything because my brothers were always there, always. Right? In fact, I had to be home by 9 o'clock every night, right, 9 p.m. If I wasn't home by 9 p.m., my dad would get the dog and come out looking for me. He knew where I was, where I'd be, but he'd come out looking for me. And nine times out of ten, I was heading home when he found me. I was heading home, but I wasn't on my own. I'd have my two brothers or three brothers with me, and I'd have all their friends with me, who were lads, and a few other girls, you know what I mean? There'd be about eight of us, and I'd go, I've got to go home now, getting on for like five to nine, I've got to go, I've got to go, I'm going to be late. And they go, okay, come on. And they'd walk us home. And then they'd go off and do what they had to do. So I'd never, ever left around on my own, ever. So that's why, like, if, like, when I lived in Birmingham, when my kids were younger, I was the one, I was, I was the mouthpiece with the potty mouth. If anything, anyone said anything to my kids out of order, it wasn't my husband, it was me. Me, bad face. You know what I mean? So, and that's how hopefully my daughter is going to be. Stick up for your kids because no one else will stick up for them. No one else is going to stick up for your child. No one like a mother. Believe me, a mother will stick up for their child every time. And for these mothers that don't stick up for their children, I've got no time for them. Right, because children don't know what to say. You know what I mean? So... But, yeah, it is easy to turn girls into prostitutes. Have you ever seen that film, what's it called now? Um, blah, 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 blah. Where his daughter goes abroad, goes over to France with a friend. And they're supposed to be staying with her, some people over there, some friends over there, but they weren't there. And while they was in this apartment, some guys come in and kidnapped them. And the daughter managed to hide under the bed. And he said, whatever happens, leave your phone on. Leave your phone on. So we could hear the voices in the background if need be. And he found her. He found his daughter. He found the girl who she, that was with her. But she was dead because they hooked her up onto drugs and overdosed her. She was dead, right? And they found her, and he found her, and he killed them. He killed every guy that got in his way. I can't taken, taken. That is a good film to watch. There's a taken too as well, but I'm not keen on that one. Taken, the film taken. Watch that film. Brilliant film. Right, and it just shows how they, how this guy, that's waiting for a taxi to get to their place, and this guy's seen these two girls coming out the airport and targeted them. Right, so he took them to their apartment, so he knew what apart where they was, what apartment they was in, everything. So then he was able to go back, get his other guys and go back and kidnap them. And that's what they do as well. That's it, with Liam Nielsen. Yeah, brilliant film, watch it, right? But there's other good films out there as well, uh, where it's involved with um, D-R-U-G-S. Uh, who was it? Um, was it Sylvester Stallone? who is a, 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 a rancher, an old man living, 
on a ranch and he was protecting someone or he went to get someone, help someone. I can't remember that film, but that's a good film as well. I can't remember the name of the film. Shoot me. I can't remember the name of that film, but that's a good film as well. And that shows you another aspect of another thing with G-R-U-G-S. Right? So, there are a lot of good films out there. I know that films, and a lot of it is dramatised and made up. Yeah, Liam Nielsen. Yeah, he's the one in that film. Taken. Yeah. As soon as you put his name up there, I knew who it was then. Yeah, it's him. Brilliant film. But I have not seen Taken 2 because... I've seen clips of it and it just doesn't appeal to me. Because I think sometimes when you make such a good film, you cannot better it. And that's what I think they hope they will do. And you can't. It's like The Expendables, right? The Expendables. Brilliant film. But then you got Expendables 2, Expendables 3, Expendables... No! No! The first one was brilliant, but two, three, and whatever else that come after it, they were good, but not that good. Right. Too many big names were being brought into it, into them films. Too many. I've probably seen them all as well, but they're not as good as the first ones. It's like... I love that film. The Hunger Games, yeah? Love it, love it, love it. But I can't... I've watched the other ones, the ones after, but I just can't get into them. Can't get into them like I did the first one. But they're good. But, no, there's another... I'm going to have to find the name for you. My daughter will know. Because it's probably at my daughter's, I've watched these films. Right, because she goes, oh, have you seen this film, Mum? No, I'm not. It doesn't appeal to me. I'm going by the name. It doesn't appeal to me. Oh, you've got to watch it. So I sit there and I'm watching it. I'm like, oh, wow, yeah, I like this film. You know what I mean? Why haven't I ever watched this film before? Because I go on the title. And I shouldn't. I shouldn't go on the title. It's like judging a book by its cover. You read the book and then judge it. And I judge a film by its title. And if the title doesn't appeal to me, I don't watch it. But that is a good film taken. And I just wish there were some fathers out there that would do this for their, their daughters. You know what I mean? Go and kick doors down. Because this is what needs doing. We need to start kicking fucking doors down. Because too many young girls are just going. And they're putting them down as runaways, as missing. No Amber Alert, nothing. And then in years time, a young body turns up. Well, perhaps if she'd looked harder in the first place. This body would not be turning up now. It's like he's been watching the uh, Keeping Up to Date with that um, guy. Oh, what was his name? His case has just been researched again. Oh, God. Oh, God. And he was, he used to buy, he was buying burner phones to get in touch with girls, to, with women, to meet up with them, and then he was killing them. Why? Right? And at the time they arrested him, he'd just been and brought a new burner phone. And he's an architect. He had his own company, everything. But his house is a wreck. You, got, you look at all these nice houses where they lived, and they've got all these nice houses. And then plonked between these two really nice houses. Is like a shed. And he's an architect, yeah. He's in, you know what I mean? I'm thinking, really? And, um, 
But I remember this one mother, his daughter went missing. And she was adamant because she phoned the police. Her daughter had phoned 911. But because it got cut off, they couldn't do, they couldn't do nothing. And the mother had been digging on this case, was in on this, looking for her daughter. She wasn't letting it go. Good one to this mother. Kudos. Bye. And she went to the last house where her phone was pinging from, right? And on the pathway up to this house, they found an earring, an earring, just an earring. She knew that was her daughter's. So someone had told her, the police had to come because this bloke was saying, she's harassing me. Right? So the police come and she, she has to leave. And then she's saying, have you searched that area? Now this area was full of bushes with pre, uh, thorns and everything in it. And they went, no. She said, why haven't you searched that area? She, she could have ran out of that house into there. I want that area searched. They wouldn't search it. So eventually she got them to search it. And guess who was in there? Years later. Well. A year or so later, her daughter was in there. If the police had only acted sooner, they'd have found her. Yes, she'd have been dead, but they'd have found her sooner. And her mother wouldn't have gone through all that heartache. Right? And um, it's on the same stretch of road where all those other bodies have been found. Right? And now, they sat trying, I don't think, I can't think what's the case. Um, God, I can't think what, what the case is called. But there's like five or six bodies found, but they're only charging him with four murders. But there's like three or four other bodies found, and they're trying to say, and people are saying, you're telling us. Law enforcement are trying to tell us that two serial killers have used the same spot of road, same stretch of road, to bury their victims. I don't think so. Right? Unfortunately, the criminals outnumber law enforcement. Most criminals are repeat offenders. Law enforcement is outnumbered by a number of crimes. It is numerically impossible to solve all missing children's crimes. It is. It is. It will never, half of these children that are missing will never be solved. Never. Right? Police departments don't have the resources no more. Their numbers are being cut back yearly. And I, I've always said this, they should not cut back on law enforcement. Paramedics, fire brigade, right? Those three sec sectors of work should not be cut back on. Because as soon as that happens, you get people committing more crimes, you get people dying, right? You get houses burnt down, offices being burnt down, because they haven't got the staff to go and put these fires out. I'll tell you a story, and this is true, where a friend of mine works. Across the road from her, from where she works, there's a, someone had collapsed, right? Collapsed. So they phoned for an ambulance, right? It took them over I think it was something like an hour and a half, two hours, for this ambulance to get there. Even though, even though an ambulance went past them. An ambulance drove straight past them. But it still took two hours for another ambulance to get to them. And the hospital was, what I'd say, from there, 10, 10 15 minutes away. 
at the most, with their sirens going maybe 10 minutes. It took two hours. Two hours. Now, luckily the, uh, the person was okay, but what if he got found, collapsed, hit his head? You know what I mean? Knocked unconscious. And he's, you're waiting two hours for an ambulance because they've made so many cutbacks on the NHS in the UK and Scotland. It's disgusting. It is absolutely disgusting. It's like I had to go for my treatment two years ago, um, about an hour away to a hospital, and one hour away by car, right? And yet I live 10 minutes away from a main hospital. The main hospital where I live in Dundee is 10 minutes away from where I live. And I had to go all the way down to another part of Scotland to get my treatment. And to have my operation, I had to go to another part. I had to go down to Glasgow for a week. But they paid for it. They paid for my train to get down there. They paid for my hotel room where I got breakfast, uh, an evening meal. Didn't, we didn't get a lunch, but we used to be out. Anyway, we used to be out in the daytime. Because after my treatment, they used to say, it's best if you keep yourself active. So I'd go and get my treatment. Then after having my treatment, I'd go and have a walk around somewhere and we'd get lunch out. So I'd either have lunch with my son if he was with me or my daughter if she was with me. But I had to go to two different places for my treatments. Yeah, I lived 10 minutes from my hospital. And then someone tried to say, oh, well, you can get that treatment at that hospital. Body. No, you can't. You can't. You can get chemo. You can go and get chemo at this hospital by me, but you couldn't get radiotherapy because they hadn't got the staff to all the machine. I don't even, even, even if you know, they had machinery to do it. But they hadn't got a department where you could go and get your radiotherapy done at this hospital. I had to go down to Glasgow. All my other hospital appointments were in Perth. But my main operation was in Glasgow. Yeah, I've got 10 minutes away from the hospital. And when people try and say, oh, but they do it at that hospital. No, they don't. If they did... Don't you think I'd opt to go to that hospital rather than go to Glasgow? You know what I mean? I just said, yeah, okay, I'll have that one. Ten minutes away. You only need to put me in a, hus in a hotel because I can have my treatment and come home afterwards. You know what I mean? I'll just go up there every morning, have my treatment and come home. But, so it really annoyed me when people say, oh, but you can get it in that. No, no, no. They're talking out the fucking backside. <laughs> so, it's, it shouldn't be cut back on, and yet law enforcement numbers are being cut back on. I was watching a programme once about Flint, and how their numbers had been cut back, and how law enforcement, the officers were scared that they're going to start losing their jobs, and all this lot. It shouldn't be like that. When you join law enforcement or become a paramedic or work for the fire brigade, you should not have that worry of losing your job unless you've done something drastically wrong. But you should not have that worry. And the people of that town should know that if anything happens, they've got the police force, the paramedics, the fire brigade to do what they need to do. This town is only a small town. Look. Where is it again? It's only a small town. They're not going to have a great big police force. Look, 
That's it. That is it. Few little houses here. Something there, something there, something there. Club over here. Houses. Right. Some at here and some at there, but it's very, very. You've got a golf course academy, a golf academy. You've got a country club. Right. So. But that's where she lived, and she's walked all the way up here. Stopped here. Went up here. Because that's where her phone was pinging. Right there. And then she's walked, and after that... Well, I'm, I'm, no, sorry, I won't say her phone was pinging. That's where the dogs took her, took her from there, from that house, over to the cemetery, around here, and then from here. Round to there. So you can see it's not a big time, so they're not going. I don't even know if they have a police station there. You know what I mean? I don't think they'd have a police station in a town that small. Yeah, um, but if you look at this, they wouldn't even have. Police department. There's, we'd have to, you'd probably be getting them come from. Oh, my God. I bet you they're police. I'm coming from over here somewhere. Because that is just a small time. Small little time. You can see how big it is. Cross, you could probably count the houses. You know what I mean? You could probably count how many houses is in that little section there. So everyone would know everyone in that time, in that little time. That, to me, here in the UK, would be called a village. Something like that would be called a village. Something that small is a village. Right? And in our villages, we used to have, like, so many houses like this. You'd have one pub, one garage, right? One shop, one grocery shop, and that'd be in a little place like that. There wouldn't be a police station. Police station would come from the nearest county. Next to you. You know what I mean? Um, well, that's where she lived. She was there. There. That's. And when it's got there, I'm not sure if they mean if that's it. Yeah, like four, five, seven, six. What's that? Like four, six, three, oh. Oh, come on. You know what I mean? So that was the house she lived in. So she come out here. Right. I run through here. And up here. Up here. Sat in this porch of this old empty house for a while. I don't know how long. From there. Walked over. Sat round here somewhere. So... Maybe right, saw the car go past. Like he could have. He could have come from this way. But it's definitely. She got picked up in a car. I don't care what the police say. Uh, 
Oh, that doesn't mean anything that the dog's lost her scent. Uh, hold on, hold on. Right? Hold on. You're telling me, oh, the dogs can trace the scent from there all the way up here. Round by this house, all the way around, up to this cemetery, all the way up here. All the way up here. And because they've lost their scent, it means nothing. If the scent was there, they'd have found it. They followed it from there all the way up. So if the scent was there, they're not going to say, oh, well, we can't, no, we're not going to go no further. A scent is there, but we're not going to follow it. A scent wasn't there because she got into a car. She saw that person's car coming past. It could have come this way, could have come that way, could have come anyway. But I think he came up this road. She sat there. She saw him. She's walked out there because the phone was ping pinging. No, the dogs followed you, sorry. What am I about phone pinging? The phone wasn't pinging. Right. And lost the scent along this road. I'd say there's a house there. And this house is there. So it's possibly just round here. Because it's not going to stop outside that house because someone could see them. It's not going to stop outside there because someone could see the car. So it's going to be round about here. Right? Or between these two houses. Between these two houses. But look how many houses there is. Come on. It's a small flipping town, village town. It's, it doesn't make sense. Oh, sorry. I've done it again, haven't I? Sorry. I haven't even got the map up there. Why haven't I got the map up there? Why haven't I got the map up there? Right, it's up there now. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Right? Right, there are we. Where did she live? This is where she lived. Here. Right. The dogs tracked her scent round here. Up here. Up here. No, sorry. That's where she lived, sorry. There. The dogs tracked her scent all about this road. Right. To this house here. Now... Word was she would, they could sit on that porch right there and get piggyback off the score for the internet. From there, the dogs have tracked her up to here. And the aunt drove up that way when they found this out and said, from here, you've got such an advantage point. You can see cars coming this way. You can see cars going that way. You can see the cars coming in. You see the cars going out. And then from there, the dogs tracked her and they lost the scent as it gone round the corner. As I said, I don't think the car would park there because it's that house. I don't think the car would park there because of these. So the car, I think, is likely to park round here. Right? Or between these two houses like here. And then from there, oh, she's got a car from there, straight up that road, straight up this road onto the, to Linden, onto the 28. Oh my God, so it's literally straight onto the 28, Highway 28 or whatever you call it. Minutes, within minutes, she'd be out of there. Because what I don't understand is why would she have all these plans, big plans for the future, what she wanted to do, right? But 
thing, run away. She's not going to do that. She wasn't a runaway like the police are making out her out to be. She wasn't a runaway. She had plans for the future. Right? Hold on. This young girl was not running away. She had no reason to run away. No reason whatsoever. But see where I'm sat taking you? There's the cemetery. If she got in a car around here, up this road, straight up this road then, onto that freeway or whatever they call them. Over here we call them motorways. We call them paying in the backsides because there's always some road works going on. Uh, and they tend to do it in the holiday season time. Not whilst kids are at school. Oh, no, no. We're going to dig up this motorway on June the 23rd, the day after the schools break up for the summer. Well, so we're just going to dig up the motorway this year, this time. So then families going on a holiday are stuck in traffic jams for hours. That's why, that's why our highway people work. We'll do it when they're on holiday, when the schools break up. Not while the kids are at school, you know, in the highway, the motorways are going to be pretty quieter. Not quiet, but quieter. So, but it just shows how easy that was out of there, up onto there. How long will it take you to drive from here to there, from there? there five minutes ten minutes at the most at the most i'd say so it's no i, I believe her friend was from alabama lived in alabama she had no friends in ohio a friend was from Alabama. She had a friend in Alabama, and then she moved to Ohio. The porch where she sat and piggybacked off the internet was an empty house. It was an empty house. And that's why people would sit there on the porch and use the internet from the school. It's like when I first moved into this flat, I had to wait some at like two weeks or summer, two or three weeks before I could get into it into my flat. So every day, well not every day, but every other day, I'd just get dressed, I'd go out and I'd sit on this bench by the library. If it was a nice day, I'd sit there. Or if it was a wet day, I'd take my umbrella and sit there like a silly old woman sitting on a bench in the rain with the umbrella. But I'd use the internet just to talk to my daughter or something like that. Just to let her know I was okay. Or sometimes I'd phone her. But nine times I, I don't phone that very often. Plus she was at work. So it's like I'd just send her a text. I never knew when she was at home. But this is just so easy. To get up onto that highway. You know what I mean? So down quick. Just from there. Linden. Is that... Uh, let's see if I can get closer than them. It's a garment feed and supply. Buckskin Township Hall. So there's no houses up there. Right. One or two here, so one. But it's just one road straight up there. Onto the 28. How flipping easy is that to get someone out of that town? That's scary. That is scary. You could walk there. I'm not joking. Right? You could... 
walk there. So right, from that town, from here, from where she lived, I think round about there, I'm not sure. Can't be sure now basically. Oh, I've got to zoom in again. Um, from where she lived here, right? Just go straight up there. Right? Again, you know what I mean? See, where that green line is, is where I can get my little man. My little man will go, should go to there. You know, it's not even getting me. You know what I mean? So they haven't Google mapped it all yet. But that's how close. She lived even from her house. From there. But she didn't. She went this way up to the school, up to the cemetery, to meet whoever here. That is scary. I thought the friend in Alabama was in Alabama, but wanted to be sure. It is possible someone saw her on that poor cat knows who she is. Nothing's coming back. I'm going to ask them. I'm writing these questions down. I'm going to ask them. I'll put it in a post. Oh, no, I'll just message that person you messaged me. And I'll go, is it possible someone could have saw her on that porch of that old house? You know what I mean? But then again, sometimes you don't realise who you see when you're walking around, right? And you don't take notice, do you? I can't see people, when I go out, I see people sitting on the bench by the library. I see them sitting on the benches outside by the doctor's clinic. I see them sitting outside the calf. I don't take notes. So if someone had gone missing and their last spot was, I don't know, say on the bench outside the library, I'd be going, hmm, I walk past, what, did I go past that way today? And I wouldn't even be able to remember if I saw that person or not. Because I'm not really taking notice. So. But that is so small. This this little tank is so small. You know, look how big it is. Come on. As I said, you could do your daily exercise by walking around. It's just walking around. It. Once, once, one lap around. Doing your exercise for the day. You know what I mean? So, look, she lived where? Here, right? If I lived there, I'd literally go down here. I'd take my little walk up to here, up to there, give me dog, give me dog, up to here, down here. Right? I'm back home again. That would be my walk every day with my dog. Something like that. Because it's not that big a place. They said it wasn't. The parents, the grandmother said it wasn't. Sex traffickers probably are using that highway as one of them. Yeah. Wasn't it the aunt or someone said something about that highway? From that highway they can get. No, that was another case. There's another case. That's Laurie Page. But yeah, you can get anywhere. You could go that way, that way. Where does it take you? You're gone, aren't you? You're gone. There's Greenfield. Yeah, that's a, look, that's a biggish place. That's like a town. That's like a city, a little city, a little town in the UK, right? And, um, for, as I think, where am I going again? Yeah. <coughs> I see, they're so solemn. That's it. That is it. 
That is South South Silent. That's it. <coughs> <coughs> God, if I lived there, I could get my thousand, I could get my thousand, ten thousand steps a day, easily, just walking around there, you know what I mean? I used to work, walk that far when I was working. So, but I think... Now I've got my bearings again. I think they've gone this way. To... Where is it? Where is it? To here. That's where I think they need to start looking. There. That's where police need to get their fucking asses in order and start looking. Has anyone been and got posters put out there? You know what I mean? Does anyone know about this young girl going missing? Apart from those in that, in that little village, that little town. Anyone know? Oh, you got Greenfield, but that's again, that's only a small thing. Let's get this off. Let's get this off. Fine. Just apart from this little, this little place here, does anyone know outside of that area know about this young girl going missing? All those big places. You know what I mean? As I said, you got all those big places. You got that field. You got Greenfield. You got Silicon. Yeah, you got. Does anyone know outside of this little place here about that young girl going missing? Towns like that, full of gossip, everyone sees everything, not out much else to do. I know from living in a small village, yeah, I could imagine. Possibly picked up in a van so no one can see inside and can pick up more than one child at a time. Hmm. But I think a van would be more noticeable. Where if it's just like, a truck, so, sort of trucks that you use in the USA, the open back ones and things like that, or a car. A van is more noticeable. In a big city, yes, a van. A lot of people use vans in big cities, but not in these little places. So if someone saw a van, go, oh, never don't see them very often up here. You know what I mean? Then you hear of a young girl going, oh, I saw this van. You know what I mean? Things like that, in a small place like that, you notice things like that. You notice a van. But no one saw her. No one saw the car. She had to have got in a car. No ifs, no buts. She was in a car. Because it, look how small it is compared to these places. It's a little, it's like the pebble in the middle of, in like the bottom of the ocean. You know what I mean? Does anyone actually, I... Now at my age, something like that would appeal to me. But when I was in my 20s and 30s with my young kids, with my young kids, maybe, yeah, but would your kids actually stay there once they got older? You know what I mean? 
or would they want to go out to these bigger cities? Because I know if I grew up in a city, in a little village like that, I'd be wanting to burst out, see the big world. So, but in a place like that, let's see a van. Let's see that van. It would stick out like a sore thumb. So I'd say it's either one of these trucks that they use, the open back trucks, or a car. Something that isn't going to stick out like a sore thumb. But as I said, we need to, I need to find out the uh, bio father's uh, first and last name. I need to find out her friend's first and last name. Just so I can do a bit of research. I'm not digging into the family. I don't want to know about what they've done and what they haven't done and where they've been and where they haven't been. I don't want to know about that. I just need to, a bit of background information on the person. Where, just, where they grew up, what, how did they meet each other, how did she m make friends with her, did they go to the same school, did they go out on the evenings with each other, did they meet up, things like that, little things. So little things that I, I'm more interested in. The little things, put them all together, builds a story. You can have a big thing, but what goes on between Point A and point B. What's going on between those two points? It's the little things. It's the building blocks sort of thing. And that's wrap the runs so they look like work runs. Yeah, I can see that, but I still think in a little town like that, a little village, a little town like that, the van is going to stick out. You know what I mean? A van will stick out. So I think it is more of a car. And I think he was picking her up and taking her to her final place, her place of work. You know what I mean? Place of no return because... Well, there is a return, but you've got to be found to get returned. And these people move around. If they know law enforcement around them, they're into a... Then I could see them putting in, put, using a van. If they've got a, a group of girls in a house, yeah, and they need to get these girls out of that house quickly, then they'll use a van to put them into a van to move them to the next location. But not when they're just picking up one girl. And only one girl was reported missing that day. But then again, was there? What about around the area? I'd like, that's something I'm going to look into. That might take a bit of digging. Other girls going missing. Or boys. Boys going missing. Around that area, around here. So, what area are we looking at? We're looking at in Ohio. Yeah, so we're definitely looking in for uh, in Ohio. Yeah. So, so taking a young girl from there, it's like the police, the law enforcement aren't going to look for her because oh, she's just too wrong away. But then again, I can say that about a bigger place like that, around Ohio. On March. Is it March? Yeah, March. Seven. So I still need to find out the father's name. I need to find out a friend's name. And I need to do some research. I want to find out, as I said, all these young girls that they've now found, right? I'd like to know when they went missing, did they close their social network down? Like go off grid. Was they told to shut the social networks down? So that's something we need that needs looking into. 
because your car transfer. Yeah, that's possible. That's possible. She could have been transferred to Van Neng, but in that little time, it would have been a car or a truck. Shut sure, up. Sure. It would have been a car or a truck because you see, in a little place like that, you see, Van, you're used to seeing trucks, open back trucks or cars. Yeah? But not vans. No. Mm. So, mm hmm. Remember, everyone, anyone on X, please leave me a comment. What do you think? Could she be in touch with her bio father? Possible. Was, uh, uh, no, I'll tell you what I think. I think she met this person before she went to Ohio, because her grand said she's persistent on wanting to come down there. Was she persistent to come down there to get away from that person? Possibly. Yeah, that's what I'm going to look into. I'm going to try and find out some information on it. It'll take me a couple of days, so I won't be able to, I won't do a live until I find out the information on that. Because unless I hear something else come through, but um, this is not just a missing child. This is not a runaway. She was building a future. She had visions for her future. She had visions for her future. So she's not going to go, oh, well, you know, all that, all that thought and hard work I've been putting into my future. All that money I was putting away when she was working, right, in Alabama. She had a job and she's putting 30% of her wages into the savings, right? Her mother said that. All that money I've just put away, you know what, I don't want it. I'm just going to give up on it all and go and run away. Don't know where I'm going, I'm just going to run away, right? <laughs> She's not going to do that. Oh, oh and plus, I write a, a cryptic message to my grand, and I write an even more cryptic, cryptic message to my uncle. Okay, but you're going to run away. Okay. Okay, we believe you. Do we, how, believe that this young girl ran, walked away, went missing, just because she wanted to? No. She walked out that house on her own. She walked down the road on her own. But not because she wanted to. There was something there. Right? So I think she met this person before she went to Ohio. She went to our home because she'd been going to Ohio to get away from this person and this person tracked her down. We don't know. Right? Could she have gone to Ohio because he's gone, oh, yeah, that's even closer to where I am. You know what I mean? Possibly. And then she's met up with this person, got in the car, bump, she's gone. But she left two notes. One note saying, I'm going with a friend or whatever to do some babysitting. If the father's a doctor, I'll get paid, I'll be in touch. Then she wrote a seven note to the uncle, tell grandma not to phone the police because it won't end well. Right? So both letters to me are very sus because there's no dates, no, no names, no addresses, no phone numbers, nothing. So both those letters are very sus and both and with those two letters, they should, law enforcement should have picked up on that. If we're picking up on it, then why haven't law enforcement? Or have they not got the resources to do this? Have they not got the resources to go looking for all these young girls that go missing? I think that's the case. I think it's the case they haven't got the resources to go looking. And if that's, that is the case, then that is sad. Because that's going to happen time and time and time again. And if I was any young girl in Ohio, a mother with a young child in Ohio, 
I'd have their fucking phones locked down so bad they wouldn't be able to ping, uh, hit a button on that phone without me knowing. You know what I mean? Christ. I'd have a mother tagged. I'd have a little microchip put in the neck. <laughs> you're not going anywhere, I'm going to know exactly where you're going. You know what I mean? But it's not right. This needs to look in. And I hope Nancy Grace does pick up on this case for us. I did email her. I'm not going to keep emailing her because that's <gasps> stalking. Ooh, I'm going to be done for stalking. Right? So let's just hope Nancy Grace does pick up on this case. If she hears, like, if everyone emailed her, if everyone just sent her an email, and she got enough emails thinking, oh my God, I'm getting all these emails about this young girl. I think we need to look into this. She'd probably do it. So please, email Yancy Grace. I can't put her email out here because I can't do that. But if you go on her page, she's on X. So look her up on X. Leave a message on her X page. Leave a picture, a flyer of this young girl. Right, leave a flyer. Have I got the flyer of this young girl? Yeah. This is the one I sent to Nancy. So, save it to your phone, uh, to your laptop, to your computer, to your phone, whatever. Send out Nancy an email t telling her about this young girl and send her this flyer. If she gets enough people to email her, she might look into this case. And I tell you now, if she starts looking into this case, I can assure you, law enforcement are going to go, oh my God, Nancy's on to us again. We better get up out there and start doing something. And now start doing something. I can guarantee you if they don't, she'll be kicking their backsides. She'll be wanting to know, why aren't you doing something? This is not a case of a missing child. This is not a case of a runaway. She will not have left those two notes. You know what I mean? She would not have done that. She'd have left a note saying, uh, so great, Grant, I'm going to such and such house. Here's his name, here's his phone number, or here's his name, here's his address. I'll be back tomorrow morning. I'm stopping the night because it's easier for that way for me to stop the night and I'll be back in the morning. She could have done something like that, but she didn't. No address, no name, no phone number, nothing. And then just that cryptic message, tell Grant, not to phone the police. It won't end well. So she knew what was going to happen when she walked out that door. And she walked out that door because there was a threat. A threat. A threat to her grandmother, to her uncle, whoever. There was a threat. They knew where she lived. If she didn't turn up, the threat was going to be carried out. That's why she went to protect her gran. Right? She probably went as well because he probably knows where the mum lives, where her friend lives, the one who won't talk to no one, the one who police won't go and talk to. Why won't the police go and talk to her? Come on. What is going on? She knows something. Talk to her. So, anyway, I'm going to leave it at that, because I've been here two and a half hours, just rambling on about this young girl, who is so beautiful, so naive, because she is at 16, you're still naive, you're still naive at 16. There she is again. Never one. So she's still naive and she needs to be found. Could be box truck or any kind of truck transferred into. Yeah, yeah, that I could believe. Yes, I could believe that, SG. Yeah. I could quite believe that. 
be a pick up point, a drop off point for them to pick her up. Yeah. So she needs to be found. She needs to be brought home to a gran or a mum. Bring her home to her mum. Right, um, let me sort something out. Right. Oh, come on. Oh, look. Yeah, I've got these two videos I wanted to share with you. All right. Let's get these pictures down. Because you won't see nothing otherwise. Right. Now, watch these. These are her cousins, I believe. Okay. You to come, please. Who has her? Please give her back. We miss her so much. We have been looking for her. Please, whoever has her, please give her back. Please, I love her. She is my cousin. Please. We have been putting signs up. There's one. There's another one, I believe. Yes, yeah. Whitney, we have been praying for you. Whitney, please come back. We have worked and worked to find you, Whitney, and we who ever has her please please come back with her we are still looking for you no matter what we will still love you no matter what if you really if you see her please call this number seven four zero four six three zero six three eight we are praying praying that she comes back or if you are watching Whitney we are looking for you please come back we have been looking and looking if you guys have seen her please 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 contact this number right here and just just let us know if you see her we've been looking all over Thank you. Whitney we have been praying for you no they don't tug at your heart then if they don't tug at your heart, I can assure you this one is. This one is going to tug at your heart. This one is going to tug at your heart because it's really got to me. Um. Now we go straight back to the beginning on this one. Oh, come on. Come on, you stupid. Come on. I'm going, I'm not saving that.
Why is this not sharing? Share. When he's not just with these. Well, I'll go back. Sorry about that. It should have been sharing and it wasn't. She loves to draw. Uh, she practices well, eyeballs, hands, and the heart. Because she says it's the hardest thing. And if you can master that, you're... Oh, let's come out of this a minute. Because this is... For some reason... Oh, come on, come back. Right. Hopefully, this is sharing. It's not sharing again. What the hell is going on? A share. Right. Um, but she's also amazing. She's friendly and kind. She loves everybody. She's never met a stranger. Um, she's very helpful. She loves to draw. Uh, she practices eyeballs, hands, and the heart because she says it's the hardest thing to draw. And if you can master that, you're a real artist. So she really loves that. When he's into the outdoors and she loves her makeup and her clothes and she has goals for when she's older. She runs through a lot of them. She wants to be a veterinarian because she loves animals. She wants to be an interior designer because she loves organizing. Um, her favorite things are tapestries. She's obsessed with them and hangs them everywhere. Whitney's not just a face. Whitney's a real person. And she's confused right now. And I don't know if she found somebody to be confused with that's going to keep her safe. Or somebody to be confused with that's going to harm her. What I do know is we just want to know if she's okay. So Whitney, if you see this and you don't want to come home, that's fine. I'll support you, me. even if it's something I don't want to support, because I love you that much. And if you can't come home, I am with you. Sorry, guys. I am with you every second of the day. This and is a mother who's breaking, broken. This mother is broken. Smiley, I only just realised you've got music playing on the background in this. Doing everything I can to try to bring you home if you're not safe. If you are safe, tell somebody. It doesn't have to be me, babe. It doesn't, just anybody. Anybody that knows somebody that knows somebody that knows me. Because the only thing I want to know right now, sis, is that you're okay. You're not in trouble, Whitney. You're not, and, and, and you know, as long as you're safe, I'll do anything I can to support what you want. I just want you to be okay. I want you to be happy. And I, and I just want to know that you're okay. So if 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 you if you just don't want to come home, I am fine with that. If you uh if you want to come home, I'm trying to get you there. And to whoever has with me with them, please. If you're keeping her from coming home, please. Just drop her off somewhere where she can get home safe. Um, and, 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 and if you're not keeping her against her will, then just tell her to let her family know what's going on. We just need to know. Um, sign our petition, guys. Um, share our petition. 
reshare the pictures. We just we just really need to know what's going on with our our, our girl. Right. Now that is a mother who is breaking. Has broken. So please, if you do nothing else with this video, if you just share it. Maybe on a trial of a... Yep. Let's hope they are. Since law enforcement busted a big ring in 2023, law enforcement might be might already be on the trail of another sex trafficking ring. If that's the case, the answer guys might be told by law enforcement not to look. Yeah, she could be told, don't look too deep into the sex trafficking. But they can't stop her from putting a video out there where she's talking to the mother or the gran, you know what I mean? And she's getting information out there about this young girl. They can't stop them, her from doing that. That's all we want is for someone with a big enough platform, right, like Nancy Grace or even Vinnie Politan. Would he look into this case? He has his own channel. He's got the court TV one, where he does, I think it's closing arguments, but he's also got his own channel that he does. So I might even email him. Right? In fact, I will email him. Right? Because he'll, he can get onto this case. He's got a big following. Hi, he does his own channel on in between all his other th things he does. He does his own channel as well, right? So I'm going. So please, if you can go over to Nancy, tw Nancy on Twitter, leave a comment on there for her with the um poster, the flyer. Email her, everyone. Just email Nancy Grace if you can. Because we need this girl to get some more high-profile people. Like Nancy Grace, Vinny Politan. I'm going to email him tonight when I come off here. Right. And send him the same sort of email with the flyer to him. So if you can, email him. He might pick up on the case as well. He's been covering. I believe he will do it, yes. Because he's been covering the Sebastian Wells case. He covers, he's been covering the Mag Magdalene Soto case. So, yeah, I, I believe he would, he would cover it. So, let's get some big people out there who can cover this case. He's on Twitter as well. So, those on Twitter who are watching this, send him a message. And anyone watching this on replay, please, please, I beg you, just email Nancy, email Vingy, email any of the big, big channels that you know. And I mean the big channels. Not ones with like 100k, ones with 50k, 60k, 70k and more. Right? But email anyone, any YouTuber that you know that will talk about this young girl, email them, send them the information, I'm sure they will pick up on this case, right, email them, there's plenty of YouTubers out there, we need this case to go high profile, as high profile as Sebastian Rogers and Madeline Soto, and don't forget we've got Audrey Cunningham, that's a big case as well, right, I will be looking at Elijah Vu again next week. So, let's get these cases like this to these big people. The people who can carry, who's got the weight behind them to get this information out there to lots of people in one go. If you know anyone in Ohio,
let them know. Perhaps they don't know about this young girl going missing. Anyone around that way. If you know someone in any of them towns, cities or whatever, around that her, where she lived, let them know. Talk to them. Put posters, Put a, get some po uh, flyers printed up and start posting them up in your town. I would do that, but I live in the UK. I can't do nothing more than what I'm doing now. My channel isn't big enough to get out there like some channels are. But I'm doing my goddamn hardest day to get this little girl, this young girl, out there in the public eye. So please, if you do nothing else, email one person. One person. Anyway, I'm going to say thank you, everyone, for being here. And I'm going to leave you going out with this. So let's take this off here first. And then I'm going to put this up. And I'd just like to say... Oh, that's okay, I'm going now, SG. So thank you for being here. And thank you everyone on Twitter who's been watching. So thank you very much. Please share, share, share. Let's get this young girl out there in the public eye.